Okay. Let's uh, let's pray as we start. Um, just want to read from this one scripture, and then we'll pray. Okay, so um, Matthew chapter seven. Okay, Matthew's gospel chapter seven and verses seven onwards, right? Seven to eleven. Um, the words of the Lord Jesus. He says, "Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For every for everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds." And to him who knocks, it will be opened. Or what man is there among you who, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father, who is in heaven, give good things to those who ask him? Okay. Therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Okay, So what uh, people call as the golden rule, whatever you want people to do to you, uh, you do to them. right? And um, the first one, starting with verse 7, Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. And you see that God does not give anything substandard. Okay? And the Lord is saying, you know, this is what as human fathers or human beings, sorry, as human parents, you know how to good gifts, give good gifts to your children. Okay, when when they ask for something, you will not give them anything that is uh, you know worthless or something that is not good for them. Right? That's what the Lord is saying. You, know, you will not give them, um, you know, a bread, and then uh, if you ask for a bread, you won't give them a stone, or uh, if it's a, you know, you will not give them a substitute which is, which is worthless, which does not really, you know, satisfy their need. And the Lord is giving, you know, um, like three things: like right? ask, seek, knock, and it's, it is all positive, right? And the fact is that He is our. Our God, He's a good God. He's He's saying, you know, uh, earth, He's comparing Himself to an earthly parent, and He's saying that, you know, as earthly parents, you know how to give good gifts, but as a heavenly Father, how much more, right? So, um, so there's a um, lot of assurance, you know, when we when we consider these these words, we see that God, you know, you will never do us wrong. Right? When we ask for something, and uh, when we ask, when we don't ask amiss, right? we are asking in line with your will. Um, you will never do us wrong. So that's the assurance that we have. Right? And I remember one. I think I shared right. One person, uh, a friend of uh, ours, saying that. Um, I think somebody's good. Good. No worries. So uh, a friend of ours saying that. Um, well, if I ask God. Uh, what if I get, you know, if not the Holy Spirit, what if I get something else, right? So that was a fear. You know, I'm asking God for the Holy Spirit, for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. What if something else, you know, jumps in? Oh, you know, I get something that is evil. Well, know whom you are asking. He's our Father. And this is the assurance he says. He gives, saying that even if an earthly father were to give this, you know, I will not. Right? That's the assurance of the Lord Jesus. Right. So today, why don't we why don't we just pray? And um, I don't know what our needs are. Right. Maybe it could be various things. Uh, maybe you know you want to go deeper uh, spiritually, and maybe you're asking for certain gifts of the Spirit. Uh, let's just ask, you know, without uh, without any doubt. Ask without any fear. Right. Ask without any. Doubting without any anxiety, right? And say, God, you know, um, based on this, based on these words, we come, we ask, we seek, we knock, right? Can we just pray, right? Father, we can. We thank you, Lord. We we come before you, reassured that we are your children, Lord, with that full reassurance, God. We thank you for these words that we read just now, 
ask and seek and knock. And Lord, Lord, you you desire, it is your desire that we ask. It is your desire that we seek and pursue. And it is your desire that we knock, oh God. And you want us to engage with you in prayer. And so, God, we come because it is you who has invited us. The Lord has invited us to ask. The Lord has invited us to seek. The Lord has invited us to knock. Lord, we thank you for this invitation. And so we come based on your invitation, God, that you are a good God, that you will never do us wrong, that you will never give us something substandard. You will never give us, oh God, something of a substitute, oh Father God. And so God, based on that, we come and we ask and we seek and we knock. And just go ahead and just, you know, whatever it is that you are seeking, whatever it is that you've been asking God, um, just go ahead and ask. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. We ask in faith. Trusting, Lord, your timing, your grace. Trusting in your power to bring things to pass. We ask you. Yes, Lord, even right now, we just move aside all hindrances, everything uh, that uh, probably comes before us like a barrier, we remove that. Maybe regrets of the past, we remove that, oh God. Maybe disappointments of the past, we remove that out of the way. And Lord, we look at your word, oh God, renewed in strength, oh God. And um, yes, Master, we don't want to be double-minded, God, about anything, but uh, single-minded and, and focused, oh God. And uh, yes, Lord, based on your word, we mix our faith, oh God, with your word. We receive your words, oh God, this morning, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are who you said you are. And so based on that, oh God, we come and we receive, God. We receive, oh God, from your hands. I'll just go ahead and just thank the Lord. <clears throat> just thank the Lord, saying, Oh God, I just want to thank you. Thank you for the work of your spirit. Thank you for the gifts of the spirit. Thank you for the things that you're bringing to pass in my life. Thank you for orchestrating, Lord, uh, uh, Lord, the place, the people, and everything, God, that you are orchestrating, which Lord, I can see only with eyes of faith, God, but you are doing that. And so we thank you. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Your plans are way beyond our imagination, God. Your Lord, your works, oh God, way beyond God, anything that we can even imagine, God. We thank you. And Lord, even as you said in your word, God, that um, that you will, even as your word declares that you will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We will do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. We thank you. We trust in you, Master. We trust in you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We thank you. We yield ourselves to you. We surrender ourselves to you, Lord, that you will mold us, that you will shape us. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so um, we've been looking at the work of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer, right? So, so you know, even as you go through it, you see that, um, well, if not for the Holy Spirit, you know, where would we be, right? And, and it's such an amazing plan and purpose, and just look at God's wisdom. Right? Uh, he knows that we cannot do things on our own, in our own strength, right? Because, uh, you know, this humanity is lost in sin. They're not able to come out of it. They cannot come out by themselves. So this great sacrifice, which, you know, which does, which, uh, which puts away the body of sin, okay? what we read in Romans chapter 6. So he says, okay, this is what will happen, that whatever is causing them, whatever is like generating them, Generating sin, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to deal with it. I'm going to put that aside. That's the first thing. Second thing, okay, now these are born again. They are new creations. They have a new, you know, spirit. They can talk to me now. Now I'm going to live in them. 
right? I'm going to live in them. I'm going to dwell in them. And uh, even as they, you know, I, I want to invite them to abide in me and I'm going to dwell in them. And I'm going to lead them. I'm going to prompt, prompt them. I'm going to talk to them. Right? And, uh, and it's not going to be uh, uh, as, you know, just a visitation like the previous dispensation, but I'm going to be in them and I'm going to make my tabernacle among them. Right? And, and then I'm going to lead them onto their destiny. Right? So if you look at it, it's amazing. Only God could have thought of something like that. Right? So uh, our response is to say, Lord, I thank you. Right? Our response is obedience. Our response is trusting him. Right? And it's, it's the greatest adventure that each of us could have. The greatest adventure. Right? Uh, well, it, will, will it be challenging? Okay, yeah, all adventures are challenging. Yes or no? Yeah. But uh, will it be exciting? Absolutely. Right? Will it be a, a walk of great contentment? Absolutely. Right? But there will be difficulties, there will be challenges. But he is with us. Yeah, that's the thing. He is with us through all this. Right? We have that great promise he says he'll never leave never forsake he will he's with us forever so you know for a believer for a christian for a believer this is the greatest hope this is the greatest hope you know where else can we have such hope where else can we get the sense of purpose right so we don't have to be a people who are without hope without purpose without meaning without direction you know, this is it God himself, the God of heaven and earth himself, dwelling within us and saying, you know, I will lead you, right? And, we, and we've been studying the work of the Holy Spirit and the work of the Holy Spirit is amazing, like uh, bringing about new birth, the regeneration, uh, leading us in a sanctifying, you know, sanctified or consecrated walk, right? Showing us, okay, I, these are things that you don't have to be part of. It's a, you know, it's, it's a life that is way below or way beneath what I've called you for. Right? And then so it's a sanctified, consecrated life. And, you know, he chooses to reveal his plans, reveal his purposes. Right? It's, not, um, it's not like he's keeping everything secret and saying, okay, you know, you cannot understand. No, he will make us understand it. Right? He's the spirit of revelation and wisdom, right, as we see. Okay, so that is where we stopped, right? That um, uh, the revelatory work of this the Holy Spirit, right? 1 Corinthians 2 <clears throat> and verses 9 to 16, right? He's the Spirit. Uh, uh, he has prepared those things for us, the Holy Spirit. Um, and God, uh, the Holy Spirit reveals those things which God has prepared. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, nor entered into the heart of man. Okay, we looked at that. Okay. So he's the one who revealed the, the plans, the purposes of the kingdom to the apostles, to the prophets. You know, if, you, if you go through uh, some of the uh, epistles, we see that oh, it was not there. Paul himself says that uh, you know, in the previous season or in the dispensation, people did not know. Right? It was not revealed, but in our time it has been revealed. Okay, so revelation to the apostles and prophets, and uh, and he teaches us what are the things of God. Okay, so let's look at um, uh, the next topic, which is the Holy Spirit helping us to pray. The Holy the Holy Spirit helping us in prayer. Okay, so let's um, look at Romans eight twenty six and twenty seven. Okay, Romans chapter eight twenty six. Okay. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. Okay, so he, he helps us in our weaknesses. Is it there? Right? Romans 8, 26. Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Something beautiful. Right? Intercession for people 
according to the will of God. So he says, you know, um, a couple of things that we see here. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. Whatever be the area where we see, okay, I perceive this as a weakness. You know, I see this as an area, I don't see this as an area of strength. Right? This is an area of weakness in my life. I'm not strong in this. Who helps us? The Holy Spirit helps us. He helps us in our weaknesses. For what? Obviously, to overcome. Right? To root it out, to overcome. So that His strength might be made perfect in our weaknesses. And his strength will be, you know, when we actually... <coughs> Sorry. When we're walking around and saying, God, you know, I'm 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 weak in this, I'm weak in this, I need your help. The, the Lord is actually, you know, bringing a revelation of who you are, first of all, an identity, you know. Uh, this is who you are, this is what you have become as a new creation. No, that doesn't mean that you know all problems disappear. That doesn't mean that you know we become super spiritual overnight. No, it's a process. Maybe there are certain things that we continue to see as, you know, hey, these are limitations in my life. You know, I'm not able to overcome. It's like painting a target on your back. You know, when you say, you know, I, I God, I, I just need, you know, I, I see this as an area which, which I need to overcome. Right? You're not saying, okay, I will never overcome. You know, this is how I am. It's not like that. You know, you're telling God, God, you know, I see this as something that needs to be overcome, God. Okay. So what, what is it? It's like painting a target. You know a target, right? <clears throat> circles, 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 concentric circles. Okay. And then that is something that you shoot at or you, you know, uh, uh, archery, you, you shoot at that. So you're pa like painting a target. For whom? For God to work. It's like a target in your back. You're walking around like saying, okay, God, you know, you, you just do your work. Okay. And he says very clearly that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. He helps us. And this is what he does. For we do not pray, uh, we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. Now, sometimes we don't even know how to, you know, where to begin. You know, it's, it seems so big, so confusing. I don't even know where to start, how to start praying for this thing. You know, how to start praying for this problem. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe it's a, you know, maybe it's not a, a problem, but it's a choice that you need to make. And it's, you see, you know, there are choices in front of me, A, B, and C, and everything seems to be good. But Lord, what is the best one? Right? So here it says, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought to pray. I don't know, you know, what should I pray for? Should I pray for this? Should I pray for that? I don't know. But here, the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and the Greek explanation for that is groanings which cannot be uttered into articulate speech. Okay, and we know, you know, when we pray in the Spirit, when we pray with the Spirit, this is what it is. It's, you know, we are groaning, uh, we are groaning with words. Which cannot be uttered into articulate speech, you know, speech that cannot be, you know, speech that can't be understood by others. But it's the Spirit of God praying, and you're groaning, and you're making intercession, and the Spirit Himself prays for us. For what area of weaknesses to be turned into strength? We don't know what we should pray for as we ought to pray, but He's praying so that the choices become clearer, right? Things become clearer. You know, I remember once. Uh, um, I was working for this uh, uh, company which was making toys. I think this was my second, third, you know, organization that I worked with, uh, company that I worked with. So this was making toys. It was and and, um, and a global, you know, uh, toy MNC. So I was making, uh, I was working for this thing, and then, <clears throat> and they had some toys which were, um, you know, which which were signs of uh, the what do you call those star signs? You know, astrology. Right, uh, so they they had those very cute stuffed toys, but they were all sun signs, you know, like Leo and uh, Taurus and all that. Uh, they were all sun signs uh, thing. So, <clears throat> so you know, 
people were buying them and all. I was sell, so uh, I was you know all these big dealers and so I was troubled. My like, God, you know what am I promoting there? You know, uh, promoting astrology, promoting horoscope and all that. And and kids are buying this. Uh, do you want me to do that? And um, and I was I, on one side. I was thinking, okay, it's just a stuffed toy. I know it's just it has all those things, but I know it doesn't. You know, it doesn't mean anything. On the other hand, I was like thinking, you know, you know, what should I do? And so the only thing that I could do was come to this verse, and it says that we don't know what we should pray for as we ought, but He helps us. The Spirit Himself makes intercessions with us with groanings which cannot be uttered. So I just trusted, trusted Him, and said, "Okay, God, I'm just going to spend some time just praying." I don't know what I don't know what to choose. Uh, I'm a little confused here, double-minded here. I don't know. I just look at it as a toy, but then I look at it as a stuffed toy. But you know, I don't know what I should pray for. You know, uh, and um, just continue to pray. Uh, took some time fasting and praying, and 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 at the end of the uh, prayer time, I I think it was um, late night. You know, with such clarity, came through with such clarity. Yeah, maybe you just need to change. Don't go with it. Okay, so don't go with it. Uh, it it's it's about this. It's something that's contradicting the word, and uh, don't go with it. So then I I started looking out, and you know, in a very short span of time, you know, there was another job opportunity, and I just moved to that. Right. So it seemed like a small thing. Right. It seemed like okay, you know. You're making a big thing out of this small stuff toy, but then it was, you know, bothering me. I didn't know what I should do. Every day I was being, I was, it was bothering me. And so, best thing that you can do is pray in tongues, pray in the spirit, right? So, I just want to encourage us. You know, we we are looking at things like, you know, there are some weaknesses, you know, things that need to change. Um, you know, stubborn, maybe thought patterns, stubborn. Habits, <clears throat> choices, difficult choices. Pray in the spirit. Pray in tongues, right? Knowing who's praying. The Holy Spirit is praying, right? Many times we think, okay, I'm, you know, I'm doing this. Or what will happen? You know, sometimes we think, right? I don't understand. Is it a waste of time? It's not a waste of time. We're praying. You, 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 you know, extended times. You're praying, and you're praying the the, the mind of God, right? the the mysteries of God. Are we going to spend uh, you know uh, the whole chapter about uh, you know uh, baptism of the Holy Spirit and and uh, the outflow of that? So we'll get into a little more details there. But this the good news is this: the Holy Spirit helps us to pray, and when we are at our weakest, when we don't know what choice to make, He helps us. Amazing again, right? We have such a friend. He has all the wisdom. He has all the knowledge, and he brings that into our lives. What more can we ask for? Right? Praise God. Amen. Come on. Let's look at one more verse. One Corinthians fourteen. Of course, this is again about praying in tongues. You know this. <clears throat> okay, one Corinthians fourteen and verse two says, um, uh, he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. In the Spirit he speaks mysteries. And then we look at verse 14. Uh, for if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. Uh, what then is the conclusion? I will pray with my with the spirit. I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Otherwise, if you bless with the spirit, how will he who occupies the place of the uninformed say Amen at your giving of thanks, since he does not understand what you say? Okay, so here again, specifically about. Praying in the spirit. I think Prince asked that question, right? Um, last time when we had, um, oops, sorry. I think I just uh, pressed that key by mistake. Um, so yeah, uh, Prince asked a question, right? Um, Prince, I think it was you about praying in the spirit. You know, like um, uh, last time when we had the mentoring hour. Uh, yeah, yeah. About you know, uh, 
is it praying in tongues? You know, can I pray? Is praying in the spirit also prayer as led by the spirit of God? Absolutely, yes. But here, the context is that whenever we see praying with the spirit or praying in the spirit, we see in the Bible that, uh, you know, especially this particular chap uh, chapter and verse, Paul is referring to praying in tongues. And if I pray in a tongue, <clears throat> my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. And then he says, I will pray with the spirit, but I will also pray with the understanding, meaning you know, in a language that I know, I will pray. But I will also pray with the spirit. You know, so he's making that distinction. In between so what happens, verse 2, he who prays in a tongue is not addressing men, but addressing God. No one understands him, but in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Right? What are these mysteries? Revelations, you know, things that that are hidden. It's a mystery. I don't understand it. God has kept them hidden so that they will be revealed through the Spirit, right? And by the Spirit. Like if you if you look at um, if you read through you know the epistles, you see that Paul is bringing out so much of revelation about the cross, about the kingdom, about the body of Christ, which was not there earlier, right? In the book of Romans, yesterday we saw in the book of Romans, in Corinthians, in Ephesians, he's talking about the body of Christ and so much of revelation. If you look at the, you know, he's talking about the cross and uh, revelation about new creation, what we have become, uh, the gifts of the Spirit, right? Which was not there earlier. Now, where did that come from? Right? Of course, Paul had a very unique, distinct ministry. As an apostle, he was a founding father of some of these doctrines. He was establishing them. A unique call. But also, if you look at the process, how did he receive God? Of course, reveal. But he says, this is how it is. You pray and you speak mysteries. Right? Things that you do not understand, but they are being revealed to you. Right? So maybe uh, you've been reading certain you know, portions of scripture and you're saying, yeah, I don't understand this. I don't understand this and uh, it's a little confusing. Pray in the Spirit. Right? Pray in the Spirit. Ask God. Pray in the Spirit and read it again. And see, He's the Spirit of Revelation and He will bring that understanding to our spirit. He'll bring that understanding. Okay. So um, if, if, even if you look at, uh, I think, Galatians. Okay, let's move to Galatians chapter 1. Um, So Paul writes about how he um, he received the revelation about the Son. Right? Uh, Galatians chapter 1 and uh, says uh, in verse 15, But when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace, to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the Gentiles. Okay, what happens? In verse 16, he says, to reveal, there was a revelation, there was an uncovering about Jesus, to reveal his son in me. Okay, is that what he says? To reveal his son in me. So God is revealing, giving him revelation, giving him understanding about Jesus, about the kingdom. And uh, he says, you know, I, that for, for what purpose? That I might preach him among the Gentiles. So he was receiving this revelation that he might preach Jesus to the Gentiles. And everywhere he went, he just preached this revelation. He wrote to them. And if you, if you look at, you know, uh, typically if you look at this um, ministry among the uh, you know, Corinthians, you know, this epistle is to the Corinthians, right? So this is what he established, a very strong church. He was there for I mean, three and a half years or so, established a strong church. Same with the efficient church. He was there for some time, maybe 18 months or something, and then established a strong church with the revelation, revelatory teaching. And people received that and they were so strong in the spirit. Right? So as men and women of God, we need the revelation of the Holy Spirit. And we, it's like, you know, what is revelation? You've read that so many times. But suddenly it's like some light is switched on on the inside of you. Right? Some, some aspect of that truth is just revealed. You're like, wow, I didn't see it before, but now I see it, right? You And you've read it so many times. 
and you know that verse by heart but there's an understanding that the Holy Spirit brings and he brings it so in prayer he brings uh, revelation right okay let's look at um, some more uh, verses prayer motivated out of love of the Spirit Romans 15 and verse 30 okay, Romans 15 and verse 30 Um, okay. Okay. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. Okay. Through the love of the Spirit. I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in prayers for me okay so through the love um you know this, the way to look at it is okay through the love that uh, you can be a response to the holy spirit response to god uh, a response of love or it can even be the love that the holy spirit puts in our heart okay so uh, puts in our heart for his purposes for his plans right so, well, um, I don't know, you know, uh, it, I don't know how many of you find prayer interesting, right? Mike Bickle was one person who, um, who actually started the 24-7, uh, uh, you know, house of prayer, that very movement right, worldwide, um, started in Kansas City. And uh, he, he shares his testimony, you know, in his college days. He was he was a good believer. He was you know he was really excited. You know he loved the Lord Jesus. Uh, he he was excited about sharing Christ with others. Um, he was excited about studying the Word. But one thing that that he was not excited about was prayer. And he said you know I just found it so difficult to pray, sit down and pray. Um, and so he says you know everybody was telling him hey you need to have a prayer life. You need to pray. You need to pray uh, extended uh, time in prayer. And he just couldn't do that. He was so bored about it. So one day he says, okay, uh, he just went to his uh, college and his hostel room and he, he just locked and he said, okay, God, I'm, from today onwards, I'm going to pray. Okay, I'm going to pray. Uh, then he says, okay, half an hour, I'm going to pray. So let's say for he started at 10 o'clock, okay, sitting and uh, started praying, God, everything that he knew. What he should pray for is praying for this, for his, uh, for that, you know, that he should do well, and he's praying for others and everything. And then slowly opened his eyes and looked at the clock, oh, ten five. <laughs> <laughs> he prayed for five minutes, and he was like, "Oh God, this is so difficult. This is so boring, God." And then he says. Actually, for the first time, he really prayed. Because it was a cry of his heart. He was telling God, God, I, you know, I'm so bored. This is so difficult. He, there was no pretense, right? Uh, there was nothing superficial. He just, he just poured out his heart to God. And, and he says, you know, for the first time, he prayed. Then God helped him, uh, gave him, uh, you know, God, God really helped him to pray. God really gave him a vision for prayer and and he would do that, and slowly his, you know, his times of prayer, uh, you know, kind of extended, and he got used him to start a global movement of twenty-four-seven prayer. You know, if you look at the house of prayer, like they have, uh, I think it's one hour of prayer and one hour of worship. I forget, maybe two hours of prayer, two hours of worship, something like that. But twenty-four hours, like twenty-four hours, right throughout, right? and people come and. Uh, people come as uh, volunteers to lead worship. People come as volunteers to pray, and it started then. Right? In contemporary times, actually, if you look at the history, there were there were you know moments like that in the past also. Um, so, how did it happen? Because of the Holy Spirit. So, if you're saying, "I'm really you know prayer is not my strength, not my area," the Holy Spirit will help us, and He will help us. And Paul is saying, out of love for the Spirit, you know, uh, you know, strive with me in prayers. Strive together with me in prayers to God for me. Okay, so praying for various needs, praying for missions, praying for you know various things. Uh, 
he will actually help us and motivate us to pray. Right? And God really wants us to partner with him uh, in this. Okay. Okay. So Ephesians 2.18 talks about how we have access to the Father through the Spirit. Um, sword of the Spirit, I think all of us know that. Ephesians 6, 17. Maybe let's look at that. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 6 and verse 17. Okay. Um, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. Okay. So Ephesians 6, uh, verse 10 onwards, talks about, like Paul says, that be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And verse 11, he talks about put on the whole armor of God. Okay, there is the shield of faith, helmet of salvation, belt of truth, etc. And goes on to um, verse 17 and says, And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The sword of the Spirit. Okay, so uh, what is the sword of the Spirit? Word of God. Okay, obviously. So, um, so how do I have access to it? And how do I use it? Okay. Is there a difference? Okay, we all have the Bible, right? So is that the sword of the Spirit? Okay. Yeah. Uh, how we tell it to others, huh? Uh, the truth in the one. Okay. Mm. Mm. Okay. Mm. So if we face temptations and the way the Lord Jesus faced temptations is every time he said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Okay, online folks, uh, what do you think? Sword of the Spirit, um, how do I use it? How do I receive it? Okay. What is a sword? What, what what is the sword? It is what is it used for? It's for battle. It's not used in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not used for you know. It's, a sword is a, it's a weapon, right? It's used in battle. So Paul is talking about the armor. Um, I can just see. Uh... Okay, so Nina here says the spirit reminds us of the right scriptures at whatever time we need them. Okay. Um, and Prabhu, okay, sword is used for the battle. Okay, so so that's the you know the word used there is uh, rema. Okay, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and the word which is the Greek word which is used there for word of God is rema. Okay, what is rema? Rema is uh, the word which is quickened by the Holy Spirit, highlighted, prompted by the Holy Spirit. Okay, maybe it could be a promise. Maybe you 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 know you you open the Bible and you're reading, meditating, and there's something you are drawn to one particular scripture or something that God reminds you about. Right? Now that's something that's highlighted by the Holy Spirit, that brought to us by the Holy Spirit. Okay, now that Rhema, well, you know, we, we get very happy as God has uh, spoken. Whether, yeah, okay, I just read out some of the comments. Power of God, uh, when we are in battle against the devil, we can use a sword, yes. Um, whether it's temptation, battle, prayer, yeah, yeah. So the, the word of God highlighted, prompted, brought into our lives by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, sometimes it's just a, it's a very simple revelation, very simple thing. Okay. But that is a weapon. Weapon against anything that the enemy might bring. Okay. What can the enemy bring against us? Discouragement, right? Fear. It could be anxiety. And like you said, it could be temptation, confusion, right? So this word of God, this high this uh, revelatory, quickened word of God is a weapon against all of these things is a sword of the spirit okay. so so it's very important right that we receive this rema word of god and we remember this rema word of god 
right? We we know that it's a weapon. So God is given give, God is giving us powerful arsenal, you know, powerful weaponry, and these need to be used in battle. Should we face them? These needs these need to be used in you know against everything. So how do we use it? What do you do with this? By proclaiming and a trials, yeah, it could be trials, temptations. So, first of all, you know, we, we receive the word, okay, and we hold on to it. We receive the word, we hold on to it. Maybe, you know, uh, your human mind is uh, actually, you know, we remember certain things, we forget other things, right? It's kind of tricky. We remember certain things. We re sometimes people remember dates, information, that, this. Then they forget, okay, where did I leave the keys? <laughs> right? The thing is to remember, to um, you know, do whatever it takes, you know, whatever works for you to remember, you know, uh, maybe jot it down, write it down. Okay, this is what he said. Uh, put the date there and say, okay, God, you spoke this. Remember it. Meditate on it. Think deeply, over and over about it. Right? And when we face those trials, when we come to those places of, you know. Um, facing some mountains, maybe facing some temptations, the Holy Spirit himself will remind us. That's the beauty thing. You know, the Holy Spirit is teaching, the Holy Spirit is quickening, and the Holy Spirit will remind us of these things. Now, the Lord Jesus said that, right? He will teach and he will remind who? The Holy Spirit, right? So he will teach and he will remind. So the Holy Spirit will bring to our mind these things, but we need to first you know, meditate on it, think about it, and not lose, lose it. Right? And he will bring it out. So we remember, and we say, uh, yeah, I'm facing this, but this is what God has said. God has spoken. You know, there could be doubts in our minds, you know, uh, are you really, you know, your friends could be like, hey, what are you doing in Bible college? Right? Uh, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. What are you doing in Bible college? Why? You know, you're reminded, okay. God, you spoke to me this. You showed me this. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is it. I'm not going to be confused because of whatever voice I hear, you know, voice of people, opinions of people. But God, uh, you have spoken, and in that still small voice, and uh, I'm going to hold on to that. Okay, just one quick. Um, the Spirit gives us God's perspective through His Word in times of difficulty, encouragement, um, sickness, yeah, whatever the situation, absolutely. Yeah, like somebody said, when discouragement comes from the world, encouragement comes from the Word. Yeah, and God prepares us well ahead of time. He gives us that so we can actually rise up in faith and stand against those things. So, so it's something wonderful. Um, that the Spirit of God does, right? Uh, sword of the Spirit. So you use it, your faith rises up, and you confess it, you declare it, and stand strong, saying, God has spoken. God has spoken. It is written. Right? Okay. Um, prayer releases the supply of the Spirit and keeps us in the love of God. Okay. So all these wonderful things uh, related to prayer, uh, we see that the Holy Spirit brings into the life of the believer. Okay, so um, what are some of the other things that we see? Okay, uh, John chapter four, verses twenty-three and twenty-four, that uh, um, the Lord Jesus having a conversation with the woman at the well, right, and uh, he is giving a revelation about what worship is. Right? You would have studied that. Um, so verse 23, 24 is saying, The hour is coming, but now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So you're worshipping out of our innermost beings. Okay? Innermost being like our spirit man. You worship God in spirit and truth. Okay? The other thing is also that in spirit as led by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so he enables us to worship in spirit and in truth. You know, uh, Philippians 3 and verse 3, uh, you know, let's read that. Talks about how we worship by the Spirit. 
of God, right? Philippians 3 and verse 3. For we are the circumcision who worship God in the spirit. Rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. So uh, we worship God in the spirit, you know, as led by the spirit of God, as laid out by the spirit of God. Okay, so it's not a ritualistic thing. It's not a routine, but we engage our spirit man. It's something deep within. It's nothing superficial. But here Philippians 3, 3 talks about we worship God in the spirit you know and like i said uh, when we encounter this word in the spirit you know it, in the greek it's in with by you know all that is used interchangeably right in with by so as led by the spirit of god right uh, with led uh, in the with the spirit of god okay um, what else um, romans 15 verse 13 there is abounding hope by the Holy Spirit. Okay, let's look at that verse. Uh, maybe someone can turn to Galatians 5 and verse 5 also. Right? Romans 15, 13. Okay, Romans 15, verse 13. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay. See, when hope is lost, everything is gone. Right? You might have everything else in life, but if you do not have hope, if you are hopeless, then you cannot actually continue. You find it very difficult to go on, face the next day, face the next moment. Why? I don't have hope. A lot of people... Um, you know, you read about people who have achieved fame, people who have achieved great things, accomplished great, great things, and then they are like, what next? I don't have, I've lost all hope. I've tried everything. I've, you know, it, it's, it's, I'm still having a void in me. You know, I don't have hope. Now here we see that may the God of hope, which means that, you know, like we said, the hope that comes from him, that hope that, which is the source, you know, God is the source of that hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Okay, what does abound mean? Over and above, right? It's not a small measure, it's abundance that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so just imagine, right, uh, that all of us abounding in hope the way we look at the world the way we look at ourselves the way we look at our problems everything will change everything will change right um paul and silas in prison singing can you believe that singing uh, it's a very challenging verse because uh, they have been ministering. They have been, uh, because of that deliverance of that slave girl, they have been beaten. And their feet are in stocks. You know? Acts 16 talks about that. Their feet are immobilized, which means, uh, you know, and they are in prison. Probably your back is bleeding. You know, prison, not the comfortable thing. No hope for tomorrow. You know, you think about that. You don't know whether justice will happen or not. But at midnight, Paul and Silas are singing, worshipping God. It's a very inspirational verse, you know, for me personally. Because many times I just complain, oh, why is it like this? Why is it like that? Here they are singing, worshipping. And it is only possible because they've allowed God, the God of hope, to fill them and so that they might abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So they're like, hey, God has said this. I'm going to exalt God. I'm going to lift up God even in this situation. Right? Okay, we'll stop here and then we'll take a break and come back. Right? Okay. <laughs>